Dr. Harold Hal Putoff is one of the most experienced ufologist scientists out there. He's been looking into the phenomena for decades, since the 60s, and he released a peer-reviewed paper in the Journal of Cosmology. He brings up some pretty interesting points about ultra-terrestrials. He calls it ultra-terrestrials and the ultra-terrestrial hypothesis. And really the paper just shows that we haven't even considered the ultra-terrestrial hypothesis really in the mainstream media. Chris Lado, welcome to Lado Files. Hal Putoff served as a senior science advisor and contractor to the DOD's OSAP ATIP program set up to investigate UAPs, unidentified aerial phenomena. Hal Putoff is an American parapsychologist and engineer. In the 2010s, he co-founded the company To The Stars with Tom DeLong. In 1967, Putoff earned a PhD in electrical engineering from Stanford University. He then worked on tunable lasers and electron beam devices. He took an interest in the Church of Scientology in the late 1960s and reached what was then the top OT7 level by 1971. Incidentally, according to Wikipedia, Scientology has eight levels. He was seven. He did not make it to Truth Revealed. He did not make it to Truth Revealed. It's unfortunate. I first read about Hal Putoff in the book Phenomenon, where basically it explains how Hal Putoff worked with the CIA to test Uri Geller. Uri Geller is a very controversial psychic. And recently, he said that he was asked to actually remote view the JFK assassination by the CIA. This is on TV saying this. And he said he was shocked, shocked by the actual revelations of that. He's not going to tell anybody because he gave the report to the CIA. He's not going to tell anyone unless the CIA reveals it because he thinks it's a very shocking revelation. It doesn't involve, he doesn't think it's involved with the CIA or the FBI or the KGB. So pretty interesting. In the 70s and 80s, Putoff directed a program at SRI International to investigate paranormal abilities, collaborating with Russell Targ in a study of psychic abilities of Uri Geller, Ingo Swan, Pat Price, Joseph McMoneagle, and others as part of what they called the Stargate Project. Both Putov and Targ became convinced Geller and Swan had genuine psychic powers. However, Geller had employed sleight of hand tricks. So there is quite a bit of controversy, okay? Many people think, or at least according to the mainstream media, many people believe Geller would use sleight of hand. Either way, Hal has a very interesting past. He worked on ATIP to the Stars Academy. He's worked with the CIA. He's been investigating this topic, the phenomenon, for decades. So either way is interesting whether you believe that he's not legit, okay, that he's part of a disinformation campaign or a tool, or you believe that he is legitimate. I mean, he's 86 years old. You know, if he if he has been a hoax up to this point, he hasn't hasn't revealed it. So it's quite interesting. So we'll go through that paper, Ultra Terrestrials now. Thanks for being here. Welcome to the channel. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you want to get notifications of my future videos. You can support the channel, patreon.com forward slash Chris Lado. So now let's get on to this video. So this is the journal, Journal of Cosmology, Astronomy, Astrobiology, Quantum Physics, Earth Sciences, and Life. It says peer-reviewed, open, open access to scholars, scientists, and the public. So from what I understand, it looks like an online peer review. It's from Center of Astrophysics, Harvard, Smithsonian, Cambridge, Massachusetts. So has pretty good pedigree. Interesting on here, Sir Roger Penrose, executive guest, recognized him. So some big names in physics, etc. Cosmology is the study and understanding of existence in its totality, encompassing the infinite and eternal and the origins and evolution of the cosmos, galaxies, stars, planets, earth, life, woman, and man. While that sounds pretty interesting, if you watch my last video, I talk about scales of universe and how it all relates. Could it be related to octaves actually in scale? Are there resonant frequencies? Quite interesting. Man. I was blown away just making that video. So cosmology, I'm, apparently I'm really into cosmology. I hope you are as well. It's, I mean, amazing subject. So here we go, ultra terrestrial models, 
by Hal E. Putoff, PhD, Institute for Advanced Studies at Austin. That's his uh, company that he's been running for many decades or several decades now. Abstract. Under consideration in this paper are two seminal statements and their concomitants currently unknown as follows. One, there is an unidentified phenomena interacting with the current human population on Earth. Number two, it is currently unknown whether the phenomenon is exclusively extraterrestrial, extra-dimensional, crypto-terrestrial, demonic jinn, proto-ancient human, time travelers, etc. Okay, so he doesn't know if it's any of those, or some combination or mutation of any of these. However, the one thing he does know, it appears highly likely that the phenomenon per se is not constituted exclusively of members of the current human population. So he's saying... It appears highly likely it's not made out of humans, of the current human population. Because if it's time travelers, it could still be humans, right? In this paper, we address the above under the overarching theme ultra-terrestrials in order to develop a template to be matched against data at hand and then may be procured in the future. Keywords, extraterrestrials, ultra-terrestrials, time travelers, forensics disclosure. Interesting keywords. I've read through this paper many times, and the abstract basically just points out the overarching theme, which is we've been studying it for a long time, and we still have basically no idea. We can't take any of these things off the table. So he looks, gives actually suggestions on how we can start to change that. How can we start taking things off the table? Because right now, basically, there's a lot of evidence that something is going on. There is an unidentified phenomenon. And it's unknown whether it could be any of these things or a mix or none of them. Okay, so that's basically how it is. And how do we change it? So how can we go about changing it so we move from a less ignorant position into a more knowledgeable position? Ultra-terrestrial models. One, background. As one takes a decades-long view of the unidentified aerial phenomena topic, it is easy to become frustrated by what one sees as a lack of robust progress in establishing sure and certain ironclad data points about even the most fundamental issues. Yes, this is quite frustrating, I can tell you. <laughs> it must be even more frustrating if you've been studying it for decades. I've only been looking into this topic for a little over a year, year and a half, and it's quite frustrating. But he says, easy to be frustrated by what one sees as a lack of robust progress in establishing any sort of certain data points about this topic. Here are the main key questions he has issues with still. Is the phenomenon predominantly nuts and bolts, psychological or metaphysical, assuming such distinctions can be made? First question is, can we even tell, is it just nuts and bolts? Is it all psychological? Is it all woo or just in the head of the witness? Or is it metaphysical, something outside of our physical dimensions that we can understand that's actually imparting both physical nuts and bolts, and psychological effects. I believe that's what Jack Vallée says. I show his argument in a previous video. You can check out here. Is the source of the phenomenon predominantly terrestrial, ultra-terrestrial, or extraterrestrial, assuming that distinctions between these alternatives are meaningful? So do we even know? Is the source from Earth? Is it terrestrial? Is it from a different planet? Or is it ultra-terrestrial? The point of this paper is ancient occult groups, for example, isolated pre-diluvial high-tech society, stranded ETs slash gods. Those are the ultra-terrestrials. And is it meaningful even to figure out if it is? Has the phenomenon ramped up in our era or has it been essentially constant over millennia? This would change, right? If we notice that there's a rapid increase in UAP sightings after Roswell, for instance, or after we start detonating nuclear weapons or was it has it been the same have we had about the same consistent level of phenomenon have we had the same miracles looking back on our history as we have recently we don't know are oft times related topics such as claimed abductions crop circles and animal mutilations truly related or are they separate categories of phenomena so could these be just totally separate issues why are animal mutilations and anal probes always associated with aliens you know is 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 it associated? And can we tell? But he says, no, we don't have any ironclad, sure answers. And finally, are institutions such as governments truly that much more knowledgeable than we are, even if only in certain protected domains? 
or are governments essentially in the same position as we are, give or take some hard data in hand? And he's worked with governments for a long time. CIA, he has worked with, he was on ATIP, OSAP, etc. So do governments even have a better idea? You know, we can keep asking them, maybe we can keep petitioning them for information, but if they don't know it, then we're not going to find anything out. So here's his critique. Section two, that was the background on this. So basically, we don't really have any hard and set facts that we can all agree on at all based on the phenomena. Okay, so here's three weaknesses, he said. Three weaknesses. I think of them as challenges, challenges to improve on. The first one is data gathering is essentially passive. Typically, events are reported and data are gathered and analyzed. This constitutes essentially a reactive as opposed to a proactive mode. Even seemingly proactive movements such as John Greenwald Jr.'s FOIA government documents search in the public arena or attempted collection of the detritus of classified programs under special conditions. All these things simply constitute efforts to cause the government to release data to passive, ever hopeful recipients. The ball is still in someone else's court. This is his passive argument. He says right here, other more proactive measures could be taken, ranging from the relatively prosaic, e.g. setting up all-weather, all-sky optical IR monitoring stations. That's amazing. If you watch my last video, my most popular video on UFOs over Ukraine, basically they used meteor tracking software to pick up unidentified aerial objects at the time. Okay, Avi Loeb has since argued that it is artillery shells, but is it? The point is we are getting more data. We're getting more and more data. So if we can replicate that in an area where there aren't artillery shells, now we have another data point. Either way, it's, it's active, right? If we're going out there and actually getting data, we're not just waiting on someone to hand us information or to release what they have. Through the more tech-intensive approaches, e.g. magnetic disturbance and RF gigahertz detectors, multivariable monitoring suits, exo-archaeological investigation. So higher tech stuff, to the arcane search for evidence of anomalous manipulation of human genetic structure and stretching to the esoteric remote viewing telepathic contact. So he's saying that these are more active measures that we could be doing. Magnetic disturbance, RF gigahertz detectors. Let's do that. Multivariable monitoring suites. Okay. Exo-archaeological investigations. I don't know what that is, but I, I want to find out. To the arcane. Does anyone know how we can search for evidence of anomalous manipulation of human genetic structure? If you do, that would be amazing. Please come to UAP Society Discord. And stretching to the esoteric remote viewing telepathic contact. Hal Putoff, one of his first uh, experiments, if you call it that, was Uri Geller, right? Into remote viewing telepathic contact. Pretty interesting. All right. So that was... Challenge number one is we're too passive, right? Our current data collection is not really doing it. We're just passively, we're begging, right? The ball's always in someone else's court. So by and large, this is the second challenge. By and large, our models hypothesis are relatively circumscribed. Man, he's calling us out for not being open-minded enough. As stated in entry two above, although interested parties tend to be proponents of what would appear to be a wide range of hypothesis, there are additional options that, though mentioned in passing in the literature, are not taken very seriously and therefore go relatively unsearched, unresearched. These include such categories as a hidden community of ET's gods, possibly stranded here millennia ago, isolated remnants of a pre-diluvial high-tech society, the Atlantis myth, or an ancient occult group who happened to stumble on new energy sources and control of gravity, and including a post-World War II covert cabal of the military-industrial complex variety, Dolan's breakaway civilization concept. He considers these in more detail in a few minutes, but these are basically the other options he thinks we need to consider that are not being actively considered. Okay, right now, it's ranging from, it's all psychological, check your DSMV, through interdimensional time travelers and angels. Okay, so people say there's, they're angels, they're, they're us from the future. Two, it's just greys in advanced spacecraft from Zeta Reticuli. I know they're greys and why they're here. Okay, so this is basically the options that he's, he says is on, is on the table, but they're not even considering all these additional options. So, too short-sighted. 
we're biasing or limiting our options. So we're not investigating. And the third challenge, way to improve, analysis speculation not forensics constitutes the, the present core modus operandi. So it's analysis and speculation. You know, we're just going to argue online. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to debate Mick West about the degrees of freedom of movement inside the targeting pod, right? That, to that level. Instead, we should be focusing on forensics, okay? Instead, on forensics. He says, we're doing pretty good at hypothesis generation, but still need to make improvements because we limit ourselves. So what we need is to incorporating elements of a more forensic gumshoe style, as in criminalists and intelligence work. That's what we need, more forensic. The very fact that so many hypotheses remain on the table regarding the source of the phenomenon clearly indicates that forensic work to date has been inadequate to eliminate certain options. Hypothesis elimination, all three forms of hypothesis handling are required. So he says we need to actually remove some of these hypotheses from the table, but we need to consider all of the hypotheses and then actually test them using forensic methods, okay? Actual forensic and intelligence criminalistics methods to actually remove some hypothesis, okay? That's the, talent, the challenges. The strategy forward, so it gives options here. Specifically, it would behoove us to set aside our tentativeness about any given hypothesis, place it on the table as almost certainly true, and go for it with an aggressive forensic mindset. So this is how we fix it right here. He says it specifically, okay? Stop being wusses. Stop limiting ourselves. I'm not going to look at that because it's woo, okay? Consider all possible options. Place that hypothesis on the table and then let's go and go for it with actual forensics. Let's get forensics data on it, okay? Because even if the hypothesis is incorrect, we will learn something from the exercise. Something's going to come out of it. Now, Hal Putoff here, I believe, states what he thinks is the best evidence for the extraterrestrial hypothesis. Okay, he goes through a little exercise on how we would look for these points of evidence for the ETH. Consider the following. Disparate hypothetical examples of the type outlined in entry two in the abstract. The extraterrestrial hypothesis. Okay, he goes through about four of these hypotheses. Pretty interesting. This one's the longest. In this scenario, crash retrievals of nuts and bolts alien hardware have occurred, the detritus of which has been distributed in the U.S. to corporate America, the Colonel Corso scenario. Setting aside the specific claims of Colonel Corso, if such is the case, certain telltale signatures should emerge under scrutiny. Moreover, some evidence indicates this could be the case. So Howe is saying, under ETH, we should look for certain telltale signs. And he also says, moreover, some evidence indicates this could be the case. A certain level of relatively low profile, possibly statements, statesman-influenced integrated investment control, global multinational corporations with convergent interlocking technology developments. So example, you have aerospace and electronics corporations with shady, shady dealings with governments or covert low profile government organizations or even non-government, right? This would be evidence for it. If biological specimens have been retrieved, the development of unusual lines of biological genetic inquiry by highly qualified professionals whose career path would seem to diverge suddenly from what might have been extrapolated from their earlier work, e.g. accelerated research into retroviruses. This is a, an example of the ETH. Sudden initiation in the late 40s or 50s without clear precedence and in known UFO-related research institutes e.g. Battelle, of concentrated development of new high-strength, high-temperature, low-density intermetallic alloys funded by nearby government facilities such as wright Pat Air Force Base, e.g. nitinol. Nit nitinol is nickel-titanium. Also known as nitinol is a metal alloy of nickel and titanium where the two elements are present in roughly equal atomic percentages. Nitinol Alloys exhibit two closely related and unique properties, the shape memory effect and super elasticity, also called pseudo elasticity. Nitinol was famous in the conspiracy circles anyway, because the patent and research was basically brought about at Wright-Pat Air Force Base shortly after 
the supposed remains of Roswell were delivered there. So the arguments are you have new ideas for materials. They're able to reverse engineer this new memory metal, right, with super elasticity using recovered alien technology. This is one example of evidence of the extraterrestrial hypothesis being hidden. The accelerated development of geopolitical alliances, space weaponsry, for reasons not wholly interpretable. Evidence for covert manipulation of the UFO ET theme in the public sector by governmental entities. We've seen this a lot, certainly a lot of evidence, e.g. CIA's 1953 Robertson panel. You also have Blue Book, Condom Report, Evidence for generally sub rosa highly classified programs addressing the UAP issue, e.g., as in the recently revealed OSEP ATIP programs, which Hal Putov was incidentally on. He was a senior advisor. Hal wrote this, Advanced Space Propulsion Based on Vacuum Space-Time Metric Engineering, Dr. Hal Putov, Earth Tech International. So this is from the actual DRIDs. These are 38 reports associated with DIA's involvement in the program documented in the list. So that was with OSAP. Privatized access to space or threats to national security might serve to stimulate the surfacing of certain technological developments, materials at, a, at an accelerated rate. So technologies, let's say James Webb is going to show us some amazing technological advancement that the government already knows about or the extraterrestrials already know about, but now this forces some surfacing of certain technological developments or materials. Okay, so at an accelerated rate. We, oh, we just found this. <laughs> it's basically. All right, he moves on to the isolated humans hypothesis. An isolated, high-tech, closed community of humans with somewhat advanced scientific knowledge exists apart from the known culture. This is like Wakanda. You have a super group of humans or Atlantis, right? Atlantis, they develop amazing technology. They're able to go under the ocean. They say, peace out. We're done with you terrestrial humans, we're going to go to be ultra-terrestrial humans. Telltale signatures might include continuing observation of technology only somewhat in advance of public knowledge. Okay, there's always a little bit advancements of our, of our technology. Unaccounted for missing financial assets and industrial-grade resources. Where'd all that nuke fissile material go? Uh, possibly including individuals, apparent covert misdirection of society. He goes on the stranded or colonizing ET gods hypothesis. This is quite interesting. Telltale signatures might include evidence in myth for high-tech interpretation of claimed devices beyond human capability of the era to manufacture, e.g. nuclear-powered algae production mana machine in biblical times. Hard evidence for isolated mountain bases detectable by satellite signatures of fast walker or UCT flight paths or anomalous undersea activity or bases detectable by distributed underwater monitoring systems. Quite interesting, I've heard anecdotal reports of USOs moving very fast underwater. So much faster than they should be able to move without pushing the water out of the way. So you're seeing kind of the same effects that we see in the air from UAPs. If they can move through air without causing shock waves as the Tic Tac has shown, then they should be able to move through water, also known as Aguadilla, Aguadilla UAP, showed it, that UAP just went right into the water. Another example, or this is a key point I just put together, the stranded or colonizing ET gods, covert elite group exercising occult religious influence in society. Think of this, you could have men in black, men in black running around. I mean, that would be a covert elite group. And then imagine they have some sort of religious influence if they could control certain key parts of, of the church, okay? That could be colonizing ET gods. They see it super advanced otherworldly beings. Evidence for buried high-tech artifacts or locales with unusual signal radiation characteristics here or off planet. That would be like Skinwalker Ranch. You have places where you have unusual signal radiation characteristics. Carl Vibe said he earnestly believes that there is a magnetic anomaly at Skinwalker Ranch. Hal says to consider it as a possible colonizing ET slash God, to consider it, and then now do actual testing and get some forensic data. Number four, this is last kind of hypothetical example, the interdimensional or time travelers hypothesis. Gaining access to our space-time continuum, telltale signs might take the form of Fortean phenomena of instant appearance, disappearance of beings. So beings walking, just appearing out of nowhere, walking through walls, you talk about things moving 
exceptionally fast or just disappearing and reappearing. Financial transaction timeline or other futures oriented activity indicative of advanced foreknowledge. This would be like Back to the Future 2, right? Biff and Back to the Future 2. Evidence for teleportation of individuals or material over geophysical distances. This could be, what about your pyramids? You know, if we can prove that they could not have moved it in that amount of time. Could that be time travelers or interdimensional beings? Appearance of humanoids in conformance with predicted genetic evolution of present day homo sapiens. This is for time travelers is what they say. Like humans that look like us, but appear to be advanced, more advanced. You know, my own point to this is if my theory of larger than life, macroscopic life actually exists, then we would be surrounded by billions of other planets. If this phenomenon, whatever it is, is keeping us in the dark to that fact until we reach a certain point, etc., then most likely we're surrounded by millions, possibly billions of other planets similar to ours. So it could be humans or similar to us, humans on an advanced timeline. They're just further ahead than us. So when they come here, it would look like they are us from the future. They could even say, yeah, we're... We are you, but from your future, meaning, well, we come from a different world, but you're going to end up in the same spot we are. Obviously, in the above examples, we have a helter-skelter montage of elements from much of the mythology of claimed UFO experience. Where I consider we need to go with it is this, to shift away from a strategy that relies solely on further content analysis toward what the intelligence world calls traffic analysis, that is to first order independent of content. So put it in order independent of content of what it is. Look at other metrics, intelligence world type metrics, gumshoe type forensic metrics. That is, while not eschewing the present strategies in place, we incorporate into our studies in as aggressive and proactive a way as we can muster more forensic work to expand our playing field and extract from the data and its surrounds more of the patterns and networks that appear to yoke the data together. So we continue our present strategies, but we need to incorporate more aggressive, proactive strategies, right? We need to put out those systems, get those, get that data. Be more proactive and don't limit ourselves to possible options. Okay, last section here, ultra terrestrials. So finally, he gets specifically into ultra terrestrials. So as a fo focused example of broadening the scope of our investigation, let us consider the ultra-terrestrial hypothesis as defined above. Okay, so he's given some examples. He gave basically the extraterrestrial hypothesis. What are some key points of evidence that would, would lead to that? How to improve it with more proactive measures, right? Now, he uses the same example, practice on ultra-terrestrials. So these are ancient occult groups, isolated pre-diluvial high-tech societies, stranded ET gods. And really, the key point is, kind of super beings, if you will, existing alongside us in distinct stealth. So on purpose, distinct stealth. First, what are possible signatures of an ultra terrestrial as opposed to extraterrestrial presence? Okay. I kind of mentioned a little bit, density of sightings over decades, if not centuries, potentially indicate a present time local as opposed to an extraterrestrial source. In other words, the UAP phenomenon is so ubiquitous as to argue against the simple model of an occasionally visiting extraterrestrial explorer. So basically, if we can show the density of sightings is over a long period of time, then that would highlight or give evidence that it is a natural terrestrial kind of phenomenon, right? But if we just get increases, so if it's just like Phoenix Lights types events where you just have crazy things come through and then we just never see them again, very rare events, then that would be like a tourist, you know, an ET tourist or someone traveling through, some being traveling through, etc. So if we have constant density over time, we can trace it back all through our mythology, then it's probably a long-term effect and an ultra-terrestrial. So it's staying here. If it is extraterrestrial, well, it's common, it's state. Recent, since World War II, claimed focused messaging regarding elimination of nuclear technologies and concern regarding environmental degradation are would be reasonable themes for a co-located but isolated terrestrial located society. So I've heard a lot. If you look at the area school in Zimbabwe, for instance, that incident is that the aliens seem to care about the environment. They want us to clean up our act clean up the environment and stop using nuclear weapons. What Hal's arguing here is that if that is correct and it's focused messaging, 
that can imply that they live here and they want the earth to be better. So they're trying to change human society, right? As ultra terrestrials, as members of the earth or inhabitants of the earth to improve it. Because why would extraterrestrials really care? You know, they're just helping us out. You know, why are they, why are they stopping by uh, and, and giving these tidbits? You know, don't use nukes and care about the environment. You know, it just seems kind of weird if they're just traveling by. Via subterfuge and disinformation, stealthily injected proliferating emphasis on the ET theme as misdirection to prevent exposure of local terrestrial habitation, as in theater a la Valet's Messengers of Deception. It would be a misdirection to point people away. So look over there, look away, right? Don't look here. You want to you wanna focus on SETI? Great. Keep looking at SETI. Amazing. Okay. So you could look at these sort of efforts to cause misdirection. Okay. There's no aliens. There's no phenomena. Okay. Okay. Now we've proven that there's someone out there. Uh, well, okay. We'll, we'll look away for sure. It's got to be from somewhere else too far away. They couldn't get here. It's too far. It is too far. We travel too slow. Interactions with humanoid genotype ranging from modern humans to creatures, all variants within the lexicon of alternative forms of the human genome. So basically, if it is ultra terrestrials from here, then maybe it came from here, right? If it's related to us, what he's saying is maybe it is somehow ultra terrestrial, meaning they were here from a long time ago. They've already maybe advanced to some specific level and then departed and come back or maybe they've just advanced to some specific level and say hey we're above you guys uh you know we live at this cooler higher dimension seeming emphasis on reproduction harvesting of sperm and ova from certain genetic lines let alone hybridization could bespeak outreach towards genetic diversity for a relatively inbred local isolated society on the wane and suffering from a potentially debilitating genetic syndrome i've heard this as well that maybe the aliens right this is i think for j-rod you know, that was the argument that J-Rod, he's captured underground and basically has some sort of disease, right? He, he needs to heal and somehow we can help him. I've heard this before, a neuronal disease, right? The aliens were out traveling around and they were manipulating their DNA and somehow they manipulated it to such an extent that they couldn't actually get past this genetic defect. They caused a debilitating genetic syndrome in their society, right? That's, that's one argument. So they are here. That's why all the harvesting of sperm and ova, the genetic lines, why they follow people up and down the genetic lines, etc. Okay, so observations of vehicles not that advanced, i.e. Compre comprehensible as opposed to magical, even if nonetheless well in advance of our own. So basically, if they come from this planet, then they're not so far ahead of us. They're not billions of years ahead of us. You know, they're just maybe a few thousand or a few hundred years ahead of us. Use of telepathic information transfer only marginally ahead of present day technical neurobiological advances in the public domain. So I don't fully understand this telepathic information transfer. You know, I, we're not that close to it, are we? I am telepathically transmitting thoughts to you, actually. It comes through sound. You could just be reading it. So it's not such a, such a stretch. I don't know why this helps this in particular. Okay, reports of cave-like or undersea destinations during claimed abductions. Interesting, would that be terrestrial? So is it on land or is it in a ship? If it's in a ship now, that would change it. But if we had reports of cave-like or undersea destinations, now that could be terrestrial, right? Ultra-terrestrial, Atlantis, under the sea. Given the need for secrecy concerning the reality of all of the above on the part of ultra-terrestrials as co-located denizens of our planet, while nonetheless being subject to a certain level of codependence, the inscrutable nature of the interactions would not be an unexpected outcome. What he says is, if this was a reality, and you had some sort of ultra-terrestrials group like this, and they, they are co-located, they're denizens of the planet, they are in some way codependent on humans. In this way, they, if they have to maintain their stealth, right? if they have to maintain their identity secret, right? If they have to be superhero secret, then the reason we can't figure it out is on purpose, right? It's on design. <laughs> That's why it's inscrutable. The nature of the interactions are on purpose. They know us so well, they're here. They know us so well, or the phenomenon knows us so well that they know how to mix up all of our assumptions. 
Second, under the assumption of compelling evidence for the above, it would be critical to discern the motivations of the ultra-terrestrials to maintain such a secret existence. Yes, good question. The question is, why have you been deceiving everybody if this is the case, right? Why? What is the reason? Of possible, of most concern to them could be an overarching fear of exploitation. You know, I don't think any government on Earth would try and exploit high-tech individuals or individuals with advanced knowledge of high technology or foreign systems, advanced weaponry. Yeah, I'm sure they'd have no issues. Even annihilation. Definitely, right? Humans act out of fear. If there is a, a, even a small group of, of people or foreign beings that could cause that sort of havoc, you can't control it, right? Look, if anyone has nukes now, the U.S. can't invade, right? So what does that mean? Countries are trying as hard as they can to get nukes, right? So if, if there's another entity on this planet that has stronger capabilities than nukes, it's going to destabilize the situation. Due to vulnerabilities, despite possessing certain levels of technological superiority or fear of assimilation and consequent loss of culture, religion, customs, uncontrolled genetic mingling, right? They don't want us mingling, i.e. culture shock, fear of human diseases, concern for consequences to the terrestrial human population. Maybe they do care about us with its attendant reciprocal effects on their own culture, only because it'll destroy their culture. Potential disruption of resource gathering, including benefits derived from stealthy interactions with and possibly manipulating certain aspects of the human terrestrial society. Crazy stuff. Why are they secret? Is it like vampires? We got secret vampires here? And third, what might be the consequences for humanity of disclosure of an ultra-terrestrial group as compared with that of a extraterrestrial visitation. Can you imagine that? So <laughs> we know there's a life form living in Earth and we don't understand and it's been here for many, many thousands of years. Is that more destabilizing or less destabilizing than we had some aliens come visit from Zeta Reticuli? I don't know. It's a good question. Clearly, the devil is in the details, but one could speculate that the former might in fact be more dire than the latter. So it could be more dire to have them amongst us, perhaps in very personal ways, meaning <laughs> very personal, like created us or are manipulating our DNA. Yeah, so could be more dire. In contrast, ET visitation, in all probability, being more foreign and inscrutable, could be safer. Okay, so it's something else. Such topics constitute interesting material for sociological research. For more detailed discussion of what I have here called the ultra-terrestrial hypothesis, I recommend The Crypto-Terrestrials by Mac Tonys. Hal then says that there is some evidence for the ultra-terrestrial scenario outlined. Author Nick Fern, Red Fern, in his book, The NASA Conspiracies, asserts that there is evidence. His interview of an ex-NASA Gemini contractor led to the claim that there was evidence of a small band of individuals who are not aliens from a distant star system at all, but supposedly represent the last vestiges of a very ancient terrestrial race of beings that thousands of years ago had an advanced and isolated civilization that was responsible for the legends of Atlantis and similar stories, but who were forced by circumstances to retreat into remote sequesters locales for survival. And look at that, just like Wakanda. So cool. However, they felt it had to be carried out under the ruse that they were from a distant star system to protect what they felt to be their vulnerable position, despite their advanced technology. Final paragraph here, correlation with ET hypothesis. Although the, the ultra-terrestrial hypothesis scenario considered here considers an expansion of the model to include other than the simple extraterrestrial hypothesis, the predicted observable consequences of the two options are quite parallel. For our purposes here, careful consideration of data obtained along the way are to be matched against templates for the two major options, ultra-terrestrial or extraterrestrial, keeping in mind that it might be both and rather than either or. Well, quite interesting. So basically, Hal Putoff, who's been investigating this since 1967 at least, he's been in the CIA, he's worked 
with ATIP. He's in To The Stars Academy. Okay, so he's had his hand on a lot of these things, okay? That is to be kept in mind. But if he is correct and he is legit, then what he's saying is it could be much more complicated than we're thinking if you do have a real extraterrestrial environment, right? If we in, are in a massive environment where you have millions, billions of other possible civilizations out there. So that's Hal Puthoff's Ultra Terrestrial Models, one of the only peer-reviewed papers I really know about. The only other one is from Entropy, Estimating Flight Characteristics of Anomalous Unidentified Aerial Vehicles. That's a peer-reviewed paper by Kevin Knuth, Robert Powell, and Peter Reale. Other than that, there's not many out there. So I appreciate greatly Hal Puthoff for putting this information out there online. And he has some scathing points. You know, basically, we can't agree on anything. Nothing has been taken off the table. So what do we need to do? Basically, put everything on the table. Seriously. Put it on. Stop limiting our biases. Now, using actual forensic techniques, forensic analysis to gather real-time data based on intelligence methods, based on criminal forensic methods, and now actually start removing some of these. Okay, so... Look at everything, hardcore, and, and understand it could be possible. Here he gives some examples for ultra-terrestrials and extraterrestrials. If you have an extraterrestrial environment, then it's very possible you also have an ultra-terrestrial environment, right? If there's one, right? If the Tic Tac Nimitz engagement is proven correct, then you have one craft that can do that. Then you have potentially millions, billions of crafts that can do that. If one is correct, chances are the rest is also correct. So we could have an ultra-terrestrial model. We could have an ultra-terrestrial type of colonization here that is keeping us in the dark, actively keeping us in the dark. Why? Because it, for some reason, it's vulnerable, gains some benefit. Maybe it's for our benefit, or it thinks it's for our benefit. Who knows? Anyway, interesting thoughts. Again, I thought this paper really opened my eyes as well to consider other options. Realize it does come from single source in another small gene pool okay so it's not a very large gene pool of the actual researchers but i appreciate how for taking the time to write this and publish this paper what do you guys think about ultra terrestrials you think it could be somebody here which one of those is the best case for you do you think it's interdimensional time travelers us from the future could it be us from a different planet future anyway interesting thoughts Thanks for watching, everybody. Smash that like button if you did. Appreciate this content. Subscribe to get future notifications. And then support the channel at patreon.com forward slash Chris Lato. UAP Society is legit. We are supporting Sky360. We will be putting out systems as soon as we can, as soon as possibly ready. And to start proactively getting more forensic data on this stuff, man. Let's do it. LFG. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace.